Yeah, we, uh, I think we turned on our cameras, yeah. Perfect, go ahead, Abby. So go ahead and introduce yourselves. Oh, hi, uh, yeah, so my name's Abhimak, but yeah, I'm gonna be, uh, go. I'm gonna go by Abby, cause it's easier, yeah. Excellent. Hi, I'm Sharon, happy to be here, happy to talk to all of you. Hi, everyone. Hopefully you can all hear me, even though you can't see me. Um, my name is Asia. I'm also really happy to talk to you all. Um, and sorry, I, my camera isn't working. I guess the security on my Mac is just too high tech. It will not let me turn on my camera, uh, but I am here and happy to answer any questions. Excellent. Thank you very much. OK, guys, so as our, our panelists um, speak, uh, please make sure to ask questions and we will address them at the end. So um, now, as you're going to meet them, uh, feel free to target your questions. So that way, at the end of their presentations, I will be able to address all of your questions. And this presentation is going to take about um, maybe 30 minutes um, to 40 max. And then the remaining time, we'll be addressing your questions, OK? So let's go ahead and over to you, Sharon. Yes. <laughs> so hi again. My name is Sharon. My pronouns are she and her. And I'm a current software engineering student at McGill. I started in 2017 and I hope to graduate in one semester. Yay, but also really sad. <laughs> um, a little bit about myself. I was born in Montreal, but my parents moved when I was one and took me to Cambridge, Massachusetts. So I heard someone from Baltimore here so hi <laughs> i lived in cambridge mass for 10 years where my elementary school motto was everyone is different everyone belongs ain't that lovely then when i was 11 we moved to beirut lebanon where i lived for seven years before moving back to montreal when i was 18 to pursue my academic career at mcgill um i love the gym I'm sad at their closed, but yesterday I rode on a Bixie for 30 kilometers, so yay me. <laughs> I love cooking. I love my cat who is here in this picture. Her name's Amelia. She came with me from Beirut, Lebanon, so did quite the journey. And I love to read. So that's, that's me. <laughs> Could we get the next slide? Thank you. Um, Throughout my undergraduate degree, I once I made this slide, I realized just how much I've done in extracurricular activity. Engineering at McGill is not just about your transcript. It's really about the experience. And in order to get a full experience, I would say you need to get involved, whatever it is, whether it's a design team or some softer skills like POW, join. So. When I started at McGill, I started with POW, Promoting Opportunities for Women in Engineering. It's the largest group in engineering, um, and it's been around the longest for 30 years now. And it's really about, well, promoting opportunities for women in engineering. <laughs> it's, it's about diversity in STEM, so it's great. And actually, that little blue um, caricature is of me, <laughs> which is awesome, because I dedicated four years of my life, yeah. <laughs> Um, I started as a coordinator, which is a little higher than a general member. If you just attend events, you're a general member, which is totally cool. But as a cord, I worked under a VP. Um, so I was a coordinator for two years under two different VPs, and they acted as mentors for me, and it was wonderful and beautiful. And then um, my third year with POW, I got a VP position, VP internal, which I then continued on to for a second year. So. I am finishing up my fourth year with POW, my fourth year at McGill, and I'm sad to see it go. But other things that I've been part of is are, includes <laughs> the Plumber's Ledger, which is a publication at McGill. It's really just a chance for engineers to write stuff. Very low commitment. You write like, as, an, as a writer, I write an article per month during the semester. And then if I'm really stressed out for a month, I don't have to write. Um, it's really chill and it allows you just to do something on the side for fun. I was also manager of the EUS G store or general store for I think about three semesters up until the lockdown. And what that is, it's um, a convenience store on campus, which is nice in one of the engineering buildings. And, you know, we sell super cheap coffee. coffee. If you bring your own mug, uh, we sell pens, paper, um, beverages, candy, 
uh, fresh croissant and danishes. So it's like really nice. Also, if you work there, then you get to see everybody pass by and buying stuff. So it's such a nice vibe. And as manager, you know, I got to have um, got to utilize those leadership skills that I got from POW and put them in a different way. And you can see the, the G store team just below the general store. Um, and another thing is I did off campus connects, which is has nothing to do with engineering, which I thought was fun. Um, but off campus connects is part of orientation week. It's actually the first event that kicks off orientation week for all uh, new students. And it's for students who aren't going into res. So I started off as a facilitator, meaning I led a group of students. And then the next year they asked me to come back as a coordinator to plan the event. And I was a coordinator for all the facilitators, which is a lot of fun. And you can see us in pink when I was a coordinator. So yeah, I, I did a lot. <laughs> Um, so this leads me nicely into my tips for you, my two cents, which are, if, yeah, <laughs> to get involved. The number one thing, again, to do at university is to get involved. It's more than just your transcript. It's more than just the grades you get. It's more than just drinking with your friends, because that's what I did first semester. It's about finding something that you're passionate about and moving towards it, because if you're in a club or in a group or in a team where you're working towards a goal that you believe in, then guess what? You're surrounded by people who believe in that same goal. So it's nice, you get to meet your people, make new friends, and then grow yourself in, in a way that you can't in class. The second point would be to find a mentor. As I said, my first year with POW, um, my VPs were mentoring me without me knowing it. I didn't know about mentorship programs, but we have so many. Check out POW McGill. I'm gonna plug it so much. P-O-W-E McGill on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. We have mentorship programs going on all the time. And if you're an incoming McGill student, then you can get can be paired with an undergrad in the same discipline. So it's great. These mentors are people who have gone through things that you will probably inevitably inevitably go through. So it's great to find a mentor and then later to become a mentor. This small little Sharon Guitar Best Explore mentor in the side is my fake award for being a best mentor, which I was super happy to get because, you know, mentors were amazing for me and I was happy to be a mentor for someone. So I highly recommend that. And then the third point is attend as many events as possible. Let me tell you what I what kind of events I've attended. Winter 101. As I said, I lived seven years in Beirut, Lebanon, where our winter is 12 degrees. I came to Montreal for the first time as an adult, super independent, and I didn't even know how to deal with winter. So I learned all about like winter boots and what the fluff is on a hood. So that's winter 101. I I went to like a write your CV. I think MESC um, had attended or had organized that. So that was great. I also went to a negotiate your salary and what is a master's. So really there are events there for everyone. There are coding events. There are less technical events. And McGill has so many groups and all these groups hold so many events and they're all for your benefit. So. It's a great opportunity for you at McGill to reach out to people, look, join all the Facebook groups and really find out how you can make your university degree the fullest as possible. I, I hope I didn't go over time. <laughs> I really enjoy talking about this. Please ask me as many questions as you want and I will pass it on to, I think Asia, I don't know, but <laughs> I'm gonna turn off my camera now. Thanks for listening. Thank you very, very much. So yes, in the audience, please, if you want to have um, uh, her answer any questions, as I've seen already um, coming in, we will address them at the end of the presentation. Excellent. OK, over to you. So hi, everyone. Um, my name is Asia. Uh, I guess you can't see me right now. My pronouns are she, her. Uh, I'm the blonde. Well, actually, there's, I guess, a lot of blonde females on the screen. Um, but in the picture in the middle, I'm the blonde uh, female on the screen. Um, and so I'm uh, majoring in bioengineering. I started at McGill in 2017. Uh, and my degree is usually a four-year degree, but I did add on eight months of an internship. So in total, 
I'm on my, I'm finishing up that fourth year. I've gone on an internship for eight months, which I'll talk about a little later on. So I have one year left uh, of my degree. Um, and it's all my more, what I consider fun project-based courses coming up. So I'm really excited for that. Uh, I am also minoring in arts and anthropology. Um, so if you're interested in that component of it too, it's not super common for, so there are minor options, but it's not super common for someone to pick arts. Um, so a lot of times I have even my friends in engineering asking me, why would you add on, you know, 20 credits of just an anthropology minor? And for me, it truly is, a, I truly did it just because I enjoyed those classes a lot. So as part of your degrees at McGill, most engineering programs have the opportunity to take uh, either electives or complementary courses. Um, and so when I started exploring courses outside of the Faculty of Engineering, I just found some in arts that I really enjoyed and I, I wanted to spend some time learning about. So that's that's my reasoning behind that, uh, that decision. Um, throughout my time at McGill, I've been involved in a lot of different things. And so I'll kind of go through some of them now. And this is by no means an exclusive list of every event that I attended or every um, thing that I uh, took part in for a little bit of time and then maybe gave up because that happens too. Um, but here on this slide, it's just a highlight of some events that occurred kind of around the university. Um, as Sharon mentioned, there's stuff going on all the time. And I mean, all the time any interest that you have, any passion that you have, anything you're just curious about, I guarantee there's some sort of event that's going on that will allow you to explore that or club. Um, and so an example of some of the events I attended where um, my department organized a weekend trip to Toronto uh, where we attended like networking events and then also just kind of hung out together in a, in a different city. Um, I've been on, you know, like lab tours. That's that picture you see in the middle. Uh, you know, visiting uh, companies just around Montreal, kind of, again, networking, but also just learning about the different projects going on in, in my field of study. Um, to that, there's, of course, networking events. I think every engineering student's familiar with tech fair. Tech fair is kind of a general engineering student um, fair that happens once a semester where a bunch of companies looking to hire students for internships come to the university and kind of showcase their company. This is actually how I found my first internship. Uh, BioEngage was just one specific to my department. There's banquets, there's uh, more uh, kind of fun party type events like Frosh and E-Week. That being said, by the way, for Frosh, if any of you decide to come to McGill, I know that this is a bit of a strange year, but even with Frosh, we hear a lot of times about the traditional Frosh. There are many options. If you're more of an outdoorsy uh, person, you can go camping. There's some different options even for Frosh uh, that can really cater to your personality. Um, and then even now this semester, my department has been really great at kind of offering uh, online versions of the same events we would have done uh, even in person. So we still had our banquet online, uh, the in-person banquets, the photo you see on the right of the screen, uh, but we, we still had it online. We all cooked a meal together and then just kind of hung out on Discord. Um, we still have a book club that we organize for those of us who enjoy reading in our free time. So just so you know, there's always things going on and uh, it's really easy to get involved even if you don't want to have a more long-term commitment of a club. So uh, next slide, please. That being said, of course, you can get involved in clubs. Uh, so just some of the things that I found myself um, doing and, and really enjoying in a way that I wanted to commit myself to for a like, longer term process uh, was in my first year, I joined the McGill Additive Manufacturing Student Society. In other words, the 3D printing design team. Um, and within that, they had many, many sub teams. And I joined the one where we were working on just um, developing a design uh, for an, a prosthetic arm for another student. Um, at the university just that looked a little different more to how they wanted versus the one they kind of got from uh from the government here for free um i've been a mentor for homework zone this is perhaps my favorite thing i've ever done at mcgill as an extracurricular um basically just tutored and did some kind of fun activities with elementary school students around the city i really truly enjoyed doing this it helped me discover actually i really um have a passion for teaching um and so that is a career path I'm kind of exploring, perhaps perhaps one day as a professor, maybe as a SEJEP. Uh, SEJEP is like a, 
for those of you not from Quebec, just a kind of transition school between high school and university here where students go to for a couple of years. Um, and I've also been on um, the Bioengineering Undergraduate Student Society as a mental health and equity representative, um, just kind of helping students access the resources they need throughout the semester, the mental health resources they need, and organizing some activities around stressful periods to kind of uh, help everyone out. Next slide. Um, and then I've mentioned internships, and I think in general, finances can be something that some of us you know, need to consider when we um, attend university. Um, and so for me, a big thing was I, I always had to kind of work part time um, to kind of <laughs> pay for my degree, to pay for my rent. Um, so this is something I was always considering, you know, what's it like working part time while you're in an engineering program at McGill? It's not always easy. Uh, sometimes you kind of have to make certain sacrifices, you know, some semesters, um, you know, some students will take slightly less courses or take, you know, I had less hours at work and just save up their money a little bit more. So it's things that that to consider for sure. If you have questions about that, I'm pretty comfortable. Feel free to ask me. Uh, but some student kind of part time jobs I had. Um, some of them were right on campus being a tour guide for McGill. Um, other things where I was a scientific guide facilitator at an environment museum in Montreal. It's that um, kind of dome you see in the background picture of the slide. Um, I worked there. Um, and then now I'm just working part time at a bookstore. I wanted a kind of relaxed, laid back job where I could just kind of go in and talk about books, which I really love, by the way. It's something I'm, I, I love reading. Um, but I, these are all jobs I really enjoyed. And then, of course, I, I did, as I mentioned, go on an internship uh, in Ottawa for the National Research Council of Canada. I found this opportunity through the university, through Tech Fair, got some contacts, and then um, was able to do some research there on. Uh, on the organic thin film transistor transistors, basically just the little part of a circuit that amplifies a signal um, on like a flexible circuit, if we're keeping it uh, relatively a simple brief explanation. And it's really cool because I actually just received news this week that uh, some work I did there um, was published. So I'm like, a, I'm a published author now, which I didn't expect. And um, that was really exciting for me. Um, and so to sum it all up, as you can see, there's a lot of opportunity um, at McGill to explore different things. It doesn't have to be uh, an engineering related activity. And I think that's something that um, is important to keep in mind as well. That's a tip that I, I would have for everyone because engineering is such a strong kind of community at McGill. It's a wonderful community full of really friendly people. It can be really easy to spend your whole time just talking to people within that faculty, which is great. Um, but you know, if I had done that, I would have never discovered I really liked teaching. I really liked um, kind of sharing my passions with uh, others who haven't learned it yet. So I would encourage everyone to try something maybe outside of their comfort zone, or to not be, um, or to not be too closed off to the idea of of trying these different events. If you like acting or dancing in your free time, you can join those clubs at McGill. If you like uh, sports, obviously you can do. Um, varsity, but you can also do just intramural sports. I've done some soccer games for my department there and I'm not very good, uh, but it was still fun. Um, and then another kind of big tip that I would have is to, to go easy on yourself. Um, obviously right now we're all showing you like the highlights of our uh, time at McGill um, and all the great things that we did, but go easy on yourself, start it off slow, try different things don't put too much pressure to do everything all at once because i think that um that can lead to um some it can, it can be difficult because you start comparing yourself to other people and sometimes you just kind of have to take a deep breath go step by step if your first semester is just you focusing on classes to get used to that that's totally fine too that's pretty much what i did um and you'll still have time to do and try all these different things afterwards um so i'll leave it at that for now um, so yeah, thank you. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Hi, can you guys, uh, can you hear me? Yes, perfect, loud and clear. Perfect. All right, sweet. Okay, so uh, as it says on the slide, my name is uh, Abhi Chaudhary, but Abby is what I usually go with because it's easier to say and easier to remember as well. Um, I'm a U3 computer engineering student. I just, I'm, as of uh, April 30th, I'll be finishing my fourth year at McGill University, and I will have one more semester remaining. 
which I'm going to do in fall. Um, I'm doing an internship this summer. I'll get to that later. But a little bit more about me. I am originally from Mumbai in India, but I've actually lived most of my life in the Middle East. I lived about 12 years in Oman, where I went to an IB school. I heard there's a couple of people from Abu Dhabi and Dubai. I went to ABA. I'm not sure if you guys I'll go to AS Dubai or ACS or some of the other schools that I've been to. But if you do, if you do, that's cool. Um, but yeah, so I'm originally from Mumbai. I've lived most of my life in the Middle East. And there I finished my high school. I did the IB diploma. And then after that, I came all the way halfway around the world to Canada. Uh, Montreal's actually my first place ever in uh, that I visited in North America. So this was like a exciting a new and exciting journey for me as well and uh yeah that's just a little bit about me and uh yeah next slide please so extracurricular engagements uh so at, at the beginning when i first joined mcgill i was really intrigued by mcgill robotics and so i joined as a member i, I was part of mcgill robotics for two years in the beginning, I was a general member and I basically experimented with the different teams they had. At the time I did Mega Robotics, they had three different teams. They had something for uh, called the Mars Rover, which was a land robot. They had an aviation a project going on and they also had an underground water submarine as well. And so with three different projects going on, I did not know where my interest lied. And so I took some time in the beginning to experiment I know be part of one of the team every uh, for the first two semesters and sort of see where my interest lies. And then starting second year, I realized that although I was interested in the technical side, I was also really interested in the management side of the uh, of the entire club. And so I ended up joining the business management team, uh, business team. And then I was actually the operations and outreach lead. And during uh, during my time as an operations and outreach outreach lead. I essentially handled, you know, uh, things that made the club going, you know, organized meetings, handled the emails. Sometimes I even uh, organized workshops, gave presentations. Um, and I, I think one of the most important things about uh, any of the uh, design teams at McGill is that the McGill Open House, this is a day where all the engineering teams, uh, all the design teams, they come together uh, in a presentation give a presentation to, uh, you know, parents, children, and uh, they, they come for, it's like an exhibition and people come in and you ex get to explain your projects and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's a great experience. You get to share your knowledge. You get to, you get to see what other design teams have been doing alongside you as well. And it's really interesting because in the second open house, uh, while I was presenting about Megal Robotics, Megal Rocket team was right next to me. And I got really interested by they, what they did. And so the following semester, I left Miguel Robotics and I joined Miguel Rocket Team for a year because just because I wanted to see what the other design teams are like and what they're doing. And so in my third year, I was part of the Miguel Rocket Team where I was a member for one uh, one year. I realized that Miguel Rocket Team was quite sophisticated and although a lot of things were just flying over my head, it was just really great to be there and see how involved people were and sort of like the detail in which and the time that people put in to make something come to life you know i was there in some of their uh, i attended some of their design review meetings in both semesters each of them were about three to four hours long and to see to the detail in which people go and how they specialize it was just really amazing and yeah it was it was great to be there and see the presentations and learn from them and then in my for the last year i have for about uh, two years right now i think i've been part of plumber's ledger with uh sharon uh, I've been a writer, I've been an editor, and I, in my first year, I also held the position of VP Communications, where I uh, basically handled the, all the social media accounts for Pumbas Dodger. But currently for the last year, I've only been a writer and editor. And I think one of the great things about Pumbas Ledger is it is something out of my comfort zone. Um, English was always something that I struggled with in high school, but I always loved to write and express my thoughts. And so this was like a great place for me to just come and express my ideas, you know, as Sharon said in a presentation as well, it's just something that is low commitment, but also something where you can have fun. And fun fact, Sharon and I actually, we both love cooking. And so we actually collaborated and 
wrote an entire article um, showing off our favorite recipes and just talking about it. And also another fun thing that I did uh, during uh, Plumber's, uh, when I was in Plumber's Ledger last year was when COVID started, I, uh, I was quite overwhelmed by the online semester. I was really excited, but at the same time, I was also confused how people were feeling because I wasn't meeting any of my friends in person. And so I had this wicked idea. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to write a Google form. I'm going to ask um, all the students in McGill Engineering what's going through their head, what they're ex excited about, what they're afraid of. Um, I also like complain about their courses or talk good things about their courses. And I did, did this for two semesters. One of them was, uh, yeah, so I did this for two semesters and it was really fun to just hear what people had to say, make an article about it and, you know, just put it out there. Because at the end of the day, I had fun and I, am, I, I know that all my readers also had fun. And as something really different, I also, did, I also was a Phonathon student caller. And what this was like a part-time job that I wanted to try out at McGill because uh, prior to coming to McGill, I never actually worked. And so I did not know what it was like to have sort of like a, you know, part-time job or some sort of like a uh, source of income, you know? And so this was really fun for me to just try out for one year where I called McGill alumni, talked to them about the different projects that were happening around McGill and sort of like persuade them in a way to give donations to McGill so projects keep going on. And not only was this like a great experience for me to sort of like talk with people who I've never met, but it was also great to like, you know, dip my phone, uh, foot in something new. I had never done cold calling or fundraising, uh, fundraising before. And so, you know, to do that and get that experience, I think it was great. And to raise money for McGill, it was, uh, it was, I, it was a great experience. And yeah. And I have one more activity I actually forgot to put on the list was uh, this semester. I actually love teaching. I love learning and at the same time, I love sharing my knowledge and understanding of things with students and just my peers. And so this semester I was part of the uh, computer science help desk where I basically helped that students in three different courses. Uh, since it was online, we had a Discord server where students would join in in a queue and we would uh, help them with their questions uh, one by one. And so it was a one-on-one -on -one session where I would talk with students for at least an hour uh, talk, uh, helping them in their assignments, helping them understand their course material. And overall, it was just, I just had so much fun talking and sharing my knowledge of courses that I love learning in the past with them. So, uh, yeah, those are some of the extracurricular stuff I've done in McGill over the last number of years. Yeah. Tips and advice. So, um, yeah, the, 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 my first two tips have to do a lot with just being involved at university, especially with your academic courses. And one of them is make the most of your elective courses. And the reason why I'm saying that is because if you haven't looked at your syllabus, you will see that you only have three elective courses that you can take. And it it might seem it might seem like a lot, but you, you soon you'll realize that over your eight semesters at McGill it is as an engineering student, especially courses get so intense and so focused on what you're trying to do that sometimes you want something different. And so make sure that when, when you have a chance to select your elective courses, that you spread them out evenly and that you choose courses that you think will be fun. You know, that'll give you like a different taste altogether. And uh, it'll just get, it's a different vibe because I remember my, my favorite elective course that I took in McGill was Intro to Philosophy, right? And I knew nothing about philosophy, but I was like, you know what, this is completely different. I wanna see what it's about. And for a really long time, Intro to Philosophy was one of my favorite courses at McGill. And I really had a great time. I had a great professor, Ian Gold, and his his uh, his course course load was not a lot. You know, you basically read, you I, I read papers, I gave uh, my thoughts about it, and essentially that was what I was graded on. So it wasn't, it wasn't anything intensive. It was something really different and something that I really enjoyed. And so that is something that I would like to say about making the most of your elective courses. Um, another thing I realized over my four years in McGill was McGill just has so many resources. At the beginning, you feel like you know everything. At, at the beginning, you will feel like everything that's there at McGill is all around you. But eventually, you'll realize that there's just so much more of, of, that you, will, you, you just don't see that easily and don't realize. And so... 
Um, this is something that I, I saw because my, quite a lot of my friends, you know, some of them are really interested in you know being entrepreneurs and uh, case competitions. And so there are clubs at McGill where you can join and pitch your ideas, get funding for them and sort of like give presentations and you know actually start a small startup and take your business somewhere. So that was really, to see that happen and that is not something that comes to your mind uh, when you're just, yeah, that's not something that comes to your mind straight away. But when you see people doing them and you explore the resources that are there, when you look around, you will see that McGill has so many things to help you out that all you need to do is reach out. And another thing that that reminds me is, uh, this is something that I felt when I first came to McGill was, I was part of a really small school. And so I had a very tight knit with my teachers. And so whenever I had a problem, I could go to them straight away and ask my problems. But when you're at university, you are surrounded by like 150 students in a class. And your professor is not the first sort of source of contact when you have a problem. And often in the beginning, you might end up feeling lost if you don't understand something, you do not know who to go to. And so you would feel like you're all alone and it might freak you out. But you that's another place you need to realize that you just have so many resources at mcgill you have your teaching assistants you have the help desk and people are always ready to help you so like don't be afraid to like talk to people ask questions if you're stuck you know talk with them everyone's there to help you out there's just so much resource at mcgill to help you out third as a, as an international student learning how to manage my time was quite important because this was my first time living away from home. And so I never done anything independently. And so, you know, this was like a whole change altogether. And so if you learn how to manage your time, not only for university, but also for uh, for your entire day, you will realize that you will have time to do, you will have time to give the university and get your course content out of the way. But at the same time, you'll have time for yourself, right? And, you know, by introducing breaks in your day or from time to time, you establish a work-life balance. And sometimes by living alone, you get homesick and, you know, you start missing home. It's a whole change altogether. So learning how to manage your time really helps with your mental health. At the same time, it helps you have a great experience while you're trying to be independent as well. And lastly, my, uh, my advice would be to explore. And by explore, a part of it is explore the university. There's just so much going on. There's so many clubs. There's so that we have websites like My Involvement. In My Involvement, when you go up, you can see a list of upcoming events that are happening. I know Sharon talked about some of the events that she went to, like Winter 101, uh, What's Masters, and I attended some of them as well. They had some of the meditation sessions to, like, you know, calm down as well as some coffee with the career advisors uh, events going on. And so if you go on, on my involvement, you'll see all of these lists of uh, um, sort of webinars as well as workshops that are happening where you can like, you know, learn something new. Um, there are so many clubs going on. Usually during the semester, we will have uh, engineering and uh, open house where, uh, which I just mentioned, you, you get to explore and see what design teams are doing. So that's like a great way to know what's going around in the university. And also Montreal is such a great city, you know? It is such a beautiful city. It is there, you have the old port, you have you have the amazing metro systems. You can just hop on and go somewhere else. You have these parks, you have the botanical garden, and there's just so much to do in the city. So yeah, manage your time, make time for yourself, explore the university, explore the city. There's so much to do. You're gonna have so much fun. But yeah, that's uh, all I have to say.